This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, the War and Peace Report, and this latest news as we are broadcasting. Um, Afghanistan will hold a second round of presidential elections on November 7th after fraud claims discredited the first round results. Cherie? Well, the business community got a shock on Monday when its leading advocacy group appeared to make a startling announcement. A statement purporting to come from the Chamber of Commerce said the group had dropped its opposition to congressional climate change legislation and would now even support taxing carbon emissions. It was a striking reversal for an organization that's been one of the most vocal opponents of efforts to regulate emissions of greenhouse gases. The newswires quickly picked up the story. And within minutes, it was being reported on the websites of outlets including the New York Times and Washington Post. It has also made its way onto cable news, including the Fox Business Network. A reversal on climate change from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Breaking news right now, the Chamber of Commerce saying it will reverse its position on the climate change bill and once a carbon tax, if you will, in the Senate bill on climate change. That was Fox Business Network anchor Brian Sullivan. Sullivan went on to speak about the significance of the chamber's shocking announcement, but midway through, he was handed another piece of news. The announcement was a hoax. Companies like Exelon and other power producers, primarily those on the nuclear side, left the U.S. Chamber of Commerce because the chamber opposed the climate change bill. Now the chamber reversing its position. The reason that Exelon and others left is they said, well, this may be a tax on business, but we need to know what carbon is worth. They want to have more of a set price. All right, so the U.S. Chamber is denying it now. All right, so maybe not. So apparently we just called the Chamber of Commerce, said, can you give us more comment on these headlines that are crossing? And uh, they are denying that they are changing their position on climate change legislation. Well, uh, that's Fox Business News. You might be able to guess who is behind this prank. Well, if you guess the yes men, you're right. The anti-corporate pranksters that have previously impersonated officials from Dow Chemical, Halliburton, the U.S. government, um, the They've put out a fake press release in the Chamber of Commerce's name. And while this was taking place, the Yes Men rented a room at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C., to hold a fake news conference for unsuspecting journalists, posing as a Chamber of Commerce spokesperson named Hingo Sembra. The Yes Men member, known as Andy Bicklebaum, read from a prepared statement. Ecologists tell us that if we don't enact dramatic reductions in carbon emissions today, within five years, we could begin facing the propagating feedback loops of runaway climate change, which would mean a disruption of food and water supplies worldwide, with the result of mass migrations, famine, and death on a scale never before imagined. Needless to say, that would be bad for business. We at the Chamber have until now tried to keep climate science from interfering with business. But without a stable climate, there will be no business. We need business more than we need relentlessly higher returns. A number of prominent and long-standing members have recently left the chamber over our opposition to climate legislation. Numerous others have expressed their dissension and a number of local chambers have done so as well. Today, we're taking their cue. There is only one sound way to do business, and that's to pass a strong climate bill quickly so that this December in Copenhagen, President Obama can lead the entire business world in ensuring our long-term prosperity. The Kerry Boxer Bill is a good start to a strong climate bill, and the Chamber will work with Senators Kerry and Boxer to strengthen it. It does need strengthening. Cap and trade depends on complex market mechanisms and big government oversight. And where it's been implemented, it's had very mixed results at best. The Chamber seeks a solid business solution, one that requires much less intervention and has a proven track record. What we need is simply a carbon tax. Only thus will we be able to compete against physics and create an environment where the best company wins and the best solution dominates. A carbon tax will mean new blood for free enterprise and a fertile new foundation for long-term business prosperity. 
The chamber also calls on President Obama and the U.S. Congress to cease subsidizing old and failed technologies like the so-called clean coal hoax and to incentivize tried and true clean technologies in their stead. Chamber of Commerce uh, poser uh, Andy Bickelbaum, a yes man. He later took questions from the assembled reporters as he answered a question about coal. The hoax was exposed in what could be a first in news conference history. An actual representative from the Chamber of Commerce entered the room confronting his imposter. We do feel that um, the subsidies for clean coal that have been uh, given by this administration are completely misplaced. And if the same amount were applied to solid, uh, ingenious solar technologies that we already have, we would see a dramatic improvement over the long term and the short term, in fact. And that clean coal is, is a, a technology that has not only not been proven, it basically doesn't exist. And it's, it's just obvious we have to put uh, our money, it's a sane business decision, we have to put our money where, uh, where the proof is. Okay, this is, uh, I'm Eric Bolschlegel. I'm with the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Um, this is not an official U.S. Chamber of Commerce event. Um, so, I don't know what pretenses you're here. I know some of you uh, in the press world, but this is a fraudulent press activity and a stunt. Who are you, so, really, sir? So, if you have any questions, you're welcome to direct them to me. Okay. This guy has a fraud. He's lying. Um, this is, you know, a stunt that I've never seen before. And we know I you're think so. I this is the question. stunt. So, does this mean that the Chamber of Commerce does not endorse, it is not acknowledging the climate change? Whatever this gentleman here said to you today is irrelevant. It's not factual. This is a fraudulent press conference, okay? He's misrepresenting the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. So what is the, the position then, it is not changed, that it is going to continue to be that there is no climate change, is that correct? I'm here to tell you that this is not a formal press conference right. by the U.S. Chamber of questions. Commerce. Yes, you, I have we did, we did hold a, a press conference last week with our with President Donahue of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Right. If you'd so like to we, get our position, for no, you? I'm with the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. You, you do you have a question? Yeah, I do. So if you'd like to actually talk to the legitimate Chamber of Commerce, I've got my business cards outside. This gentleman, I will assure you, does not have any business cards, and he's not legitimate. <laughs> In a statement, the Chamber of Commerce denounced the yes men, saying, quote, public relations hoaxes undermine the genuine effort to find solutions on the challenge of climate change. These irresponsible tactics are a foolish distraction from the serious effort by our nation to reduce greenhouse gases. The U.S. Chamber believes that strong climate legislation is compatible with the goals of improving our economy and creating jobs. We continuously seek opportunities to engage in a constructive dialogue to achieve these goals. We will be asking law enforcement authorities to investigate this event. Beyond that, the chamber will simply continue to focus on a positive vision for getting people back to work and growing our economy. That's the statement of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Well, one day after his latest hoax, the Yes Men's Andy Bickelbaum joins us now from Washington, D.C. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Andy. Um, what about the statement of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce that you, in fact, are getting in the way of responsible, constructive dialogue about global warming? Well, the only thing getting in, in the way here is the chamber's absolutely troglodytic backwards stance on global warming. Uh, the entire rest of the world is ahead of them, uh, including our own government, our own Department of Energy, and even a number of the chamber's own biggest members and uh, branches have left the chamber over this ridiculous stance that they're taking that we don't need climate legislation. They're not backing the Kerry Boxer bill, and not because it's weak, but because they don't want climate legislation. They don't want science interfering with business. And that's about as stupid uh, a position as you could have. It's like the most backwards um, of corporate America. And I just want to read to you, Andy, some of the, the lobbying numbers, the amount of money that the chamber has spent lobbying Congress. Mm -hmm. The third quarter lobbying expenditures were just released a few days ago. They tallied to a jaw-dropping $34.7 million. That, uh, that record-breaking amount translates into more than $300,000 in lobbying per day. What are per your day. thoughts? Well, for $300,000 per day, we could have put on about 600 
of the press conferences that we did yesterday.